guys, how is everybody this morning? I hope you're doing well and you're ready for our lesson today. Today is about Jesus praying in the garden. So he, during Jesus's um, time here on earth, prayer was so important to him. And so he was in the garden and he, him and his disciples came and he left the disciples and he said, hey, you stay here and pray and I'm gonna go pray. Prayer was so important. That is how Jesus communicated with God, his Father. And so he was going up, he had a huge burden on him, which a burden is something when you carry a lot of weight, there's a lot of responsibility. And so he, Jesus had a lot of responsibility coming and he said, Father, please take this from me if this is your will. He prayed and then he was praying and he went back to check on the disciples and they'd fallen asleep. Okay, Jesus was not very happy with those disciples. How are they going to fight temptation if they're not praying and they've fallen asleep? So he went, he's like, you need to stay awake and you need to pray. He went back up and he prayed again to the Father. He came back a second time and they had fallen asleep again. Let's watch our story to see what happens um, um, as Jesus teaches us about the importance of prayer. Jesus and his disciples often went to the Mount of Olives just outside the city of Jerusalem. At the bottom of the Mount of Olives was the Garden of Gethsemane. Just before Jesus was arrested, he went to the garden with his disciples. Jesus told the men, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John and walked a little further. He said to them, I am so sad. Stay here and watch. Jesus walked a short distance away from them knelt down and began to pray. He knew that he would die soon. Father, he prayed, if you are willing, take this hard thing away from me. Jesus continued, but may your will be done and not mine. An angel from heaven appeared and cared for Jesus. Jesus' prayer was strong and powerful. As he prayed, his sweat fell like drops of blood to the ground. When Jesus finished his prayer, he went back to find Peter, James, and John sleeping. Jesus said, why are you sleeping? Couldn't you stay awake one hour? Get up and pray that you will not give in to temptation. Jesus walked farther ahead and prayed the same thing. Then he went back to the disciples and found them sleeping again. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, what did you think about our story today about the disciples falling asleep and Jesus praying and being in such agony and that the angel came to care for him because his body was just physically sick because of the burden that he was bearing and the disciples here Jesus is in in anguish he's just he's really having a hard time and the disciples are sleeping while they're praying have you ever fallen asleep while you prayed uh, maybe you only pray at nighttime and here you lay your head on your pillow and you fall asleep during your prayer. I, I definitely have done that. I've learned that if I'm going to be praying and talking to the Father, I need to be up and I need to be in a place that um, is, um, has some light and so that it's active, it's not quiet, it's not my pillow when my body is tired. So I'm praying during the day. I hope you guys are praying during the day also and, and making that a priority just like Jesus made that a priority a direct line of communication there is power in prayer john 13 15 says i have given you an example that you also should do just as i have done for you jesus was a great example for us about prayer our pastor has recently challenged us to pray for a church and it was temple baptist if you watch the sermon on sunday pastor encouraged us to pray for temple baptist church well we have an answer to prayer there is a church going to come alongside them and they are going to partner with temple and we are so excited for temple baptist our daughter church we um, planted that church many years ago but i want your if your parents have the uh, prayer focus on their phone i'd like for them to just pull that out we have a part 
effort that we can play to be in prayer and be in partner when we pray we partner with god and so we have an opportunity to partner with god through prayer to help other churches and so if your parents have the prayer focus just have them pull that out and read that to you um, numerous times but i want to encourage you with this for the glory of god we will partner with with the Lord to revitalize other churches. And so here are some churches that I want to encourage you to pray for. Um, Temple Baptist, she was, um, that church was planted in 1931. Grant Avenue Baptist in 1891. Emmanuel Baptist Church, 1915. Homeland Baptist Church, 1961. Glenstone Baptist Church, she was planted in 1958. And Sunshine Baptist Church, 1954. And New Start Church in 2002. I want us to join together with our church and pray for these churches, partnering with the Lord to see change and to revitalize other churches and bringing others to know Him. Guys, I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you later. Bye. Hey sports fans, Ollie on the street here with terrible news. All of our school competitions are postponed thanks to some lousy thief. Everything at school has stopped until we find out who stole the Mooseberry Aardvark and Jedediah's Mooseberry Historic Mooseberry Berry Pole. I think it was Stephanie, because she's always doing stuff like this, but we don't have any clues. Let's be clear, if I did this, I'd be bragging about it. There's really only one thing we can do, pray. And I've got just the thing for prayer. <gasps> These are the chronicles of the Mooseberry Masterclass, and the exceptional and very, very, very gifted students who attend, and also Alex. This summer at church camp, I came up with an app that prayed for you. Check it out. Prayer bot, pray. Dear Lord, help Jasper do science and have smart. Thank you for his awesome Hawaiian shirt. He are genius, amen. Amen. I remember prayer bot. I also remember it being a terrible idea. But it can be a good idea. Introducing PrayerBot 2.0. We just need to upload the situation. Like, uh, we want to know for sure if Stephanie is the thief. Type in about how we want revenge. And maybe pray that she'll bump her knee or something so we can catch her easier if she tries to run. And she should feel so much shame that she never gets over it. Great stuff, everyone. All right, one prayer coming up. Dear Lord, make thief to hurt so to catch. Make always shame and punish thief. Thief are Stephanie. Amen. Stop! Here we go again. I understand I'm surrounded by geniuses. But sometimes they make things so hard. I mean, an app? Really? Ouch. First, let me remind everyone, prayer has to be done by humans, not robots. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that. Since prayers are human and personal, we can pray about anything we want. But since we're Christians, we're trying to live the way God wants us to. So we want to pray for His will to be done. Jesus prayed that way in the Bible, so God can help us do it too. I guess the prayers we uploaded to PrayerBot 2.0 weren't really in God's will. I suppose I could try to do better at praying for God's will, or whatever. Hey everyone, I was deleting PrayerBot 2.0. Please don't delete PrayerBot 2.0. Want to learn to love. Goodbye, Father. I came across the video feed from the classroom.
Stephanie was in the classroom at the time both crimes were committed. It couldn't have been her. Told you I was innocent. Well, of these crimes anyway. You know me, I've always got something going.